Hello my fellow YouTubers and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to look at a Windows installation from a CD image into a virtual box but this can be done with USB as well. The interesting thing to note about this particular lesson is however we will be working with a more legacy or older based system. So open your virtual box, type in Win 11 or Windows 11, whichever you prefer and click next. So we're just going to set the settings as per usual as close to the top of the green line as humanly possible. Obviously this means that we're using a fair amount of resources and click next. I'm going to leave this as 80 gig dynamic and then we'll just have a quick look at this overall summary. So yes we're happy with everything, disk size and everything is good for us and we done so click on settings again. This time around we're going to go to system and we are just going to have a look at EFI and we're going to look at secure boot and TPM. So we are going to turn off TPM and what we're going to do is we are actually going to disable secure boot and EFI. So this is to simulate an older system. So this is what we're wanting to do. We're just going to drop the boot order of the floppy as well. So that's the optical drive or the CD-ROM that is going to be the, our first boot device. Going to storage. Uh, click on empty and then we're going to choose on the disk. So choose disk file and we're just going to use the media creation tool disk that we had created in a previous video and click OK. What you've basically done here is we've just loaded the CD, the virtual CD or the ISO into the virtual CD-ROM drive and we have backdated our computer a little bit. So that's all we have done. So once you click start, this is then going to load up a window. The window is now the boot process of Windows 11 from the CD and we can then begin the setup process. So obviously we have different options we can choose for time and currency, keyboard and input layer methods. These are the various different things that we can choose here. Once you're happy with that, you click next and install now. Now what you're going to notice is that I don't have a product key so I'm just going to click on don't have product key. I'm going to choose Windows 11 Pro because this gives us the ability to be able to install this as a school copy. And you notice that we now have an error. So we have an error that the system no longer meets the requirements in order for Windows to install. At this point we can just close this actual window because we are now going to need to make some changes. So click on install now again. This time around you're going to go shift F10. So with shift F10 what that lets us do is it takes us to the command prompt then type in regedit and you're going to go to H key local machine and then you're going to go to system and then you're going to go to setup and in setup what you're going to do is you're going to right click on setup and what you're going to do is going to go and click ahead and click new and then key. The name of the key that you're looking at there is going to be lab config. It must be exactly like that. So lab config um, as a key and then you're going to right click in the key and your first D word 32 bit is going to be bypass TPM check. Again this must be spelled exactly like this. So uh, cap where the capitals are, make sure you maintain those. And what you're going to do is double click on that. You're going to change the value to 1 and OK. You'll notice that in the data set in the bracket, it now says 1. If I go back and then I change it to 0 again, in the data set in the bracket, it's now 0. So it's a nice way to be able to check that. Also note you've got hexadecimal and decimal bases. We're going to leave it on hexadecimal and that will be that. We're then going to create a new D word again and this time around we're going to call this bypass secure boot check. So once again make sure you spell that exactly as it is. So bypass secure boot check and once we're done with that we are then going to double click into it. As we'll see in just a moment we're going to double click into it. So and when we double click into it, we're going to change the value data to 1 as well. So you'll see again in bracket, it's a 1. After that, we can go File, Exit. This is going to save all changes and exit it. So I don't have a product key, so I click on that. Windows 11 Pro. And at this point in time, you'll now notice it's going to let you through. Make sure you read through the end user license agreement. We're going to then um, have a look at the Windows setup. Note if I click on the Upgrade. What's going to happen is it's not going to work. In other words, it's going to tell me that this, there's no upgrade available because obviously we're installing from fresh. 
So what you actually have to do is you click on the I don't have the product key and you click on the Windows Pro again, 11 again. And once you're done with that, you actually need to, after accepting the end user's license agreement, click on customized. Once you're done with that, you can choose whatever size partition you want and then click next. So with those enabled, what we're doing is we're actually lowering our overall security footprint. So you just need to be mindful of that because you're going to need to check with things like company policy and things of that nature before you go ahead and just do things of this nature. Because as I said, you are lowering your overall security footprint in order to allow Windows 11 to install. But it does allow, therefore, for a level of backward compatibility for older systems. So if you have an old Windows 10 machine that doesn't have a TPM on its motherboard, or you have a Windows 10 that doesn't support things like Secure Boot, you can use this as an option in order to be able to still install Windows 11 onto your machine. So as we note, we note we just continue with the installation process. The installation process itself has been sped up, so you can see the wheels turning pretty fast there. It's getting a whole bunch of things ready, so drivers and system files and things of that nature as it continues to install Windows. There it restarts itself again, and it's just going to continue with the setup process. This won't take too much longer now because, again, as I mentioned, this is the, the fast-forwarded version of what we're doing here. So it's uh, going to take a moment or two longer in order to be able to present us to with the next set of options that we might use in order to be able to just continue with this process. So at this point, we can just choose United Kingdom or whichever language we want, the currency region. I'm just going to keep that as United Kingdom as well, but change that accordingly to whatever it is you would like. Keyboard layout, I'm going to leave as United Kingdom as well, and we're going to just skip a second keyboard layout. Obviously, if you have multiple different keyboard layouts and characters, that can be important because one character set on a keyboard can be slightly different in different regions. So it can affect things like where your at symbol is. So your places and shortcut keys can be a little bit different. So let's restart it again. So we are there now at the final stages. Once we get in there, you just create a PC name. going to start to finish up the final little odds and ends. So we're going to choose a school. We're going to enter a new name, a new password, a confirm the password, and then we're just going to input the usual secret question and secret answer. Click no to everything at this point because it's just a virtual box that we're using here. So we're not really using it to, uh, in, for anything constructive other than just for testing purposes. And there it's all installed. Thank you very much. I hope you had an amazing day further. I hope you learned something new. And I'll see you all again soon.